the power of a hundred billion suns harnessed for one sinister purpose. This time, the empire might strike first. I'm Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm a theoretical physicist and a science fiction fan. Join me as I show you how to make sci-fi science. As a kid, I loved all those sci-fi movies with their death rays and laser cannons. The bad guys always had some awesome weapon in space that they would use to threaten everyone here on planet Earth. It's a chilling but intriguing concept. A planet buster may be the ultimate weapon in a future galactic arms race. But it may also provide the ultimate protection against an asteroid strike. I'm going to show you how I think we could create one. If I'm going to build a working Death Star, it must have a devastating beam weapon, which is capable of destroying a planet, and I must be able to aim it at anything I like. But first, I need a sci-fi reality check. The guys already living in a galaxy far, far away have their own ideas about what a Death Star should do. It's the ultimate weapon of mass destruction, capable of obliterating an entire planet. It can destroy a whole planet in a single blast. Total annihilation. Boom, done, over, done with. That sounds like a tall order. But incredibly, there actually is something already out there that contains more than enough power. The bad news is, there's one pointed right at us. 1967, the height of the Cold War. Government scientists are monitoring space for hostile Soviet activity. Suddenly, out of nowhere, their satellites detect huge bursts of radiation. Tension mounts. This must be a Soviet nuclear test, perhaps on the far side of the moon. But the scientists soon realize that what they've discovered is something far more deadly. What they have detected are dying neutron stars that, in their final moments, shoot out beams of enormous energy. They're called gamma ray bursters, and they are the most powerful force in the universe, second only to the Big Bang itself. They sound like the perfect Death Star. This is the binary star system WR104, which includes two very massive stars. And we see as the two stars orbit each other, material that's flowing out and forming dust. One day, and that day may be tomorrow, and that day may be 10,000 years from now, that star will explode and form a gamma ray burster. We're very unlucky with this particular binary star because we are looking straight down the gun barrel. And it's a truly massive gun. Not only will the explosion be incredibly powerful, but the energy is all focused in one direction. And in the case of WR-104, that's right at planet Earth. We believe that these stars shoot their gamma rays out along the poles of the stars. So when this star explodes, it will shoot gamma rays out, and some of those gamma rays will intersect with the Earth. All life on the surface of the Earth might be wiped out. There's no question about the devastating power of gamma ray bursters. But how can I use them for my planet-busting Death Star? A gamma ray burster is like a spinning gyroscope. When it goes past the tipping point, it releases a burst of radiation through the North Pole and the South Pole. Now, an advanced civilization might be able to aim and then fire the gamma ray burster in any direction, creating a weapon of cosmic destruction. So, if I could somehow control this killer event, I'd have my very own Death Star. Setting one off is a bit like playing galactic pinball. To fire a gamma ray burster at will, you need two things. First, a neutron star. They are heavier than our sun, but only a few miles across. Packed with energy, 
they are highly unstable and right on the brink of collapse. Second, an object big enough to push it past the tipping point. A dwarf star should do the trick. Here's how it works. Imagine that the hole at the bottom of this pinball machine contains a neutron star, a dying star. Now, neutron stars are unstable. It doesn't take much to tip one over and have it explode. Imagine that a pinball represents a dwarf star. It's attracted by the enormous gravity of the neutron star. And as a dwarf star plunges into the neutron star, it tips it over, causing an explosion, a gamma ray burster, the greatest release of energy since the creation of the universe. It has the explosive energy of a hundred billion stars, concentrated in the beam with a killing range measured in thousands of light years. I think I can come up with a way of setting one off. First, I need a neutron star that has a white dwarf circling around it. Something like WR-104, the gamma ray burster that's pointed at Earth. Now we need to shift some planetary bodies around. The best way to do that is to use what's called a gravity assist. I'll need a very large spaceship, something with enough gravitational pull to fly alongside an asteroid and alter its course into the orbit of the White Dwarf Star. In turn, the gravitational pull of the asteroid would force the white dwarf to change its orbit and send it crashing into the heart of the dying neutron star, triggering the vast explosion. Turning a gamma ray burster into a Death Star is right at the edge of our understanding of the universe. It could take us centuries to millennia to master this cosmic technology and make this happen. But with some clever ideas, we might be able to blow up entire planets a bit sooner. I'm designing the most terrifying weapon in all of science fiction. A Death Star that can vaporize an entire planet. Amazingly, we already have the basic technology in the form of lasers. Our lasers aren't quite there yet, but in the future, can a laser ever blow up an entire planet? The answer is a resounding yes. And the reason is, there is no limit to the amount of energy you can pack into a laser beam. So in the future, a Death Star could be able to blow up a planet like Alderaan. But my practical challenge is, how do I get enough power into a laser beam to blow up a planet? The key to building a laser is the lasing material. That's a substance with atoms whose electron shells are unstable usually in a gas or a crystal. Pump energy in, and out comes a beam of photons. Bouncing that beam back and forth through the laser material between a set of mirrors amplifies it until the energy builds up dramatically, and you end up with the awesome power of a laser beam. Laser light is special because it's coherent. All the photons are marching in phase, in lockstep, something which is never found in nature. Imagine these dominoes are the atoms inside our lazy material. At first, they're just lying there, doing nothing. But if I pump some power into them, they'll stand up. They're energized, but unstable. If I fire a photon of light into them, they will collapse, each atom releasing another photon of light as it falls. When the first photon hits a domino or excited atom, it triggers the release of a second photon vibrating precisely in phase with the first photon. 